My grandfather's war experience uh, began in 1917 when he enlisted and it kind of followed on from his experience as a telegram boy, I guess, because he was a signaller. So he went to the trenches at the Somme and his job was to roll out the wires and um, for the communications between the trenches. So whenever the bombs would come over and destroy the wires, he and his mates would have to crawl out and, and roll the wires out again. So he was a signaller for the whole time. He was gassed in the trenches um, and he saw some of the heaviest bombardments in 1970, well, 1918 really. His diaries and letters home indicate that the soldiers were very aware the whole time of what was going on back here in relation to soldier settlement. My grandfather, when he was in the trenches, was already thinking about what he was going to do when he got home because in his letters he mentions the soldier settlement scheme and he says in one letter, if dad hears of a place that he can look at, I would like him to have a screw round and it won't take so long and he may hear of something that otherwise a fellow might miss. What I was thinking of going in for was sheep, mainly lambs and wool. There will be a big demand for all classes of stock and with a few ewes and a little cultivation, I can't see but what I should do all right. On the ship on the way back, he was obviously thinking more broadly about what he might like to do besides sheep. He says on board the HMAS Bacara in 1919 that the YMCA have a big stock of books, but not a brilliant lot. We also have the education scheme going, and I've been attending lectures on horticulture. When he got back from France, he, his father had found a farm that he thought was suitable and in fact he was very thrilled with it and the records, the public records office records show that it was an excellent farm for a soldier settler. Beautiful country near the Pyrenees. My mother was born on the soldier settlement property in 1921 but she has no memory of it. But her older brother who was born in 1918 while my grandfather was in France um, recorded quite a lot of his memories of, of the place and he talked about my grandfather running two teams of eight horses each. 16 horses is a lot for a single man to run. And he talked about how exhausting it was. His, he would work the teams alternately. He'd have eight horses one day and the other eight the next. Um, then he would come in, have his breakfast. Then he'd go out all day, take his lunch with him and work the, the property. Then he'd bring the horses home. He'd have his dinner and then he'd go out and care for the horses, do any veterinary care, any shoeing care and so on. It was very, very hard work for um, a single man to be doing. And he had excellent crops and did very well. In fact, he managed to pay off a good deal of the debt that he owed, but he got very sick. He developed what at the time was called neuritis. Eldest son remembers him sitting down and just not being able to move. It was a nerve complaint of some kind. When he, in 1926, when he was very ill with the neuritis, he wrote, he made the very difficult decision to um, try to transfer his lease that he couldn't carry on. The real reason for my wanting to sell out is ill health. I'm a sufferer from acute neuritis and am at times helpless, as well as having an affection of the right kidney, which is getting worse each year through working the various implements, which aggravates the complaint. And he sold for a good price. A lot of the soldier settlers couldn't make a profit by selling, but he had such a good place that he did um, manage to take something off it, of all his work. And he moved from there and purchased a motor mechanics garage because he'd done a lot of work with tractors and so on prior to the war. In the end, he had a hire car, which he took to Queensland. Um, in an effort to make some money. People have paid him to take the car to Queensland to drive them up. But when he got to Miles in Queensland, he developed influenza along with the rest of the group. Um, they all recovered, but he didn't. He developed pneumonia and died. I think the family myth, if you like, was that he died as a result of his war injuries. He'd been gassed in the trenches in France and he died of pneumonia. But if you look at the photographs of him, when he came home from the war in 1920, he looked beautiful, healthy, happy, all of those things. He was a good physique. 
It's only after he went on to the farm, two or three years later, that you can see what a, a toll it's taken on his health. The family myth said that he died as a result of his war injuries, but really I think it was probably the result of a lot of hard work and stress.